It's been more than a month since Perseverance landed on Mars, and the same amount of time has passed since I did that video where my COVID hair was over 9,000. And the rover has had some time to perform at least part of its mission, preparing for the launch of its helicopter counterpart, Ingenuity, and soon it will test its drill and answer some burning questions about the Jezero crater, where it landed. We're going to dig into what mysteries Perseverance has uncovered and check in on InSight to see what it's learned from the seismic waves created from Perseverance's landing. But first, be sure to hit that like button, comment what you think Martian settlers would do in their free time, smash that subscribe button, check out the Patreon, and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. Perseverance has been quite busy in the month and some change since it successfully landed on Mars. Most of the work the rover has been doing has been devoted to preparing to study Mars's geology. Our friend Percy has been taking more photos of the Martian landscape than a tourist on their first trip to France, and in stunning full color too. And it has also analyzed some of its surroundings. The Jezero crater was the choice landing spot for Perseverance for two reasons. One of them being the 40 meter high cliffs of the ancient river Delta situated not far from the crater. The Delta is thought to have been deposited by a flowing river that existed billions of years ago. And it's here that the Perseverance team thinks they have the strongest chance of uncovering evidence of past microbial life. When those ancient waters flowed, it's thought that this would have been the ideal environment for the development of simple life forms. However, a dangerous dune field lies between Perseverance and its choice destination, and the team, as of when this video is being recorded, needs to plan the best path the rover might take to get there. Jezero, as it turns out, has some intriguing properties as well, though. Perseverance uses a laser-powered device to zap rocks, vaporizing their outer layers. Once that material is freed by the laser, the rover analyzes the chemical makeup of the rocks, as well as the sound that the laser makes when it hits the rock. This sound informs the scientists back home about the hardness or softness of the material that Percy is dealing with. The second reason the Perseverance team chose Jezero Crater is because they thought its floor might be made up of volcanic rocks. And after the initial analysis on the photographs taken by Percy's SuperCam microimager, it appears that they were right. The composition of the rocks at Jezero appear to be very similar to basaltic rocks on Earth. Basaltic rock is the most common type of rock in Earth's crust, making up the majority of the ocean floor, and it just so happens that it's the most common type of lava, too. Go figure, right? According to a geochemist at Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico, Roger Weens, Perseverance is showing us that Jezero Crater may have lots of water locked up in its minerals. This observation also lines up with the Perseverance team's predictions for Jezero as well. It will be a few months before Perseverance can start its real work. The estimate for reaching the cliffs overlooking the ancient delta is June if all goes according to plan, as the team needs to test all of its scientific instruments. And as of March 16th, the helicopter counterpart of the rover, Ingenuity, has yet to launch. While Percy's tiny helicopter has yet to fly, it has done something else that's pretty important. On March 30th, Ingenuity took steps toward making its first flight a reality by surviving temperatures on the red planet that would probably turn you into a human-flavored popsicle. Since Perseverance landed on Mars on February 18th, it's been carrying Ingenuity in its belly, which sounds really weird now that I say it out loud. The team behind Perseverance knew there was a possibility that these extreme temperatures might be enough to cause the tiny helicopter's batteries to fracture. We're talking negative 90 degrees Celsius, negative 130 degrees Fahrenheit for all us heathens in the US. Yeah. And believe it or not, that's almost as cold as the coldest temperature ever recorded in Antarctica, which was minus 93.22 degrees Celsius, or minus 135.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Luckily, Ingenuity survived these temperatures, huddled beneath Perseverance's belly. But if you think the craft is done being tested, keep in mind that Mars can get as cold as negative 125 degrees Celsius or negative 195 degrees Fahrenheit. Teddy Tizantos, Ingenuity Deputy Operations Lead, had this to say about Ingenuity's first night. We actually survived the first night. That is huge. That was one of the huge, huge achievements that we've been looking forward to. Being able to drop under our own energy, sustain ourselves, keep ourselves warm throughout the night, 
and then wake up and talk with Perseverance and say, yep, we're here, we're alive and healthy. Ingenuity's first flight on the Red Planet is set to take off no sooner than April 11th. And Tizantos says that the team couldn't be happier with what lies in store for the 1.8 kilogram, four pound helicopter. Vandy Verma, Perseverance chief engineer for robotic operations, suggested that they've found the perfect area for the helicopter to take flight. The location, which Verma did not elaborate further on, apparently meets all the requirements for an airfield, meaning that it's probably nice and flat with just the right amount of rocks. If all goes according to plan, Ingenuity will conduct a series of long flights, proving once and for all if it's indeed possible to fly on the Red Planet. And if it's a success, it could mean that future missions to Mars will include various types of flying drones that could be extremely useful in exploring the planet's surface. Just three years ago, it was suggested by Sue Smirker, Deputy Principal Investigator of the InSight mission, that we've only seen 1% of Mars's surface. To put this in perspective a bit, think about the fact that we've only explored 5% of the moon's surface. Who knows what could be lurking in the shadows of the Red Planet waiting for us to discover. <laughs> yeah, I've seen how this horror movie starts. But speaking of insight, wasn't it supposed to detect the seismic waves of Perseverance's landing? What happened to that? Well, at the time of recording this video, NASA has said nothing about whether or not InSight was able to detect seismic waves produced by Perseverance's landing. But it has picked up Mars quakes since then. So either this means that NASA is sitting on the data until it can be properly analyzed, or the rover wasn't able to pick up Percy's landing. While this may sound disappointing, remember that NASA only said that there was a small chance that InSight would pick up these seismic waves. So it's our fault for getting hyped about it. And the lander's first Martian year on the red planet, which equals 687 Earth days, its seismometer detected 500 Mars quakes. But recently, this seismometer has had some difficulty due to extreme wind speeds. It's getting in the way of the clear signal that NASA scientists need to interpret data. Now though, the worst of the Martian dust storms have passed and the lander has been able to pick up two Mars quakes measuring at a magnitude of 3.0 since Perseverance landed. There are actually two other quakes that these readings were compared to. And John Clinton, a seismologist who leads InSight's Mars quake service at ETH Zurich, suggests that since they touched down 687 Earth days ago, according to the InSight team, Mars quakes can be divided into two different types. Some of them appear to be similar to quake detected on the moon, and others appear to be very similar to quakes we experience here on Earth. The two quakes observed on March 7th and 18th came from Cerberus Fosse, which is a region where InSight had the most success in detecting seismic activity, including the two largest Mars quakes picked up thus far. These four quakes are all very Earth-like, suggesting that the area is geologically active. This could mean that volcanic processes deep within the Red Planet aren't as dead as some scientists think. But NASA warns not to get too excited for the coming Mars winter, as they may have to make InSight go into hibernation. Remember those dust storms we mentioned earlier? Well, it appears as if some of the dust has caked onto InSight's solar cell. And with Mars getting farther from the Sun and its elliptical orbit, it seems as though power collection will be very difficult. To make matters worse for InSight, it's currently winter where the rover is now. If things get dire enough, later this spring, NASA may have to put the rover on ice until conditions improve. Pun intended. But despite this possibility, Perseverance at least has a very bright Martian year ahead of it. The photos that Perseverance has taken so far have captured the imagination and wonder of every space-loving science nerd, people like me, here on Earth. But in the coming months, it's going to be doing a lot more than just acting like a glorified tourist. We have the first flight, or crashed aircraft on Mars to look forward to before Perseverance sets off for the Delta. Before it can take off toward its cliffside destination, however, it will need to test its drill by taking its first sample. Perseverance's instruments will be able to tell whether or not the rocks in the area of the Jezero crater are volcanic by analyzing the rate at which radioactive isotopes in them decay, something which scientists have yet to be able to determine. Volcanic rock naturally traps radioactive elements, and they decay at a pretty consistent rate. This process will also allow the scientists back here on Earth to accurately date how old this volcano is. There's a big schism in the scientific community when it comes to volcanic activity on the Red Planet. Some believe that there is evidence of recent activity, even going so far as to suggest that Mars might merely be dormant right now, like a sleeping giant. Well, not compared to the Earth, of course. 
Mars is tiny. And others believe that Mars is nothing more than a dead world. If Percy identifies volcanic rocks that are relatively young, it will be a massive scientific find. But there's a reason why the rover is hunting for volcanic rock, and that has to do with past, or possibly current, microbial life. It's thought that long ago Mars was habitable, a concept we've hammered to death on this channel. But it's also been suggested that the last time Mars's surface was truly habitable was around 3.8 billion years ago. While this is probably true of the surface, the recent discovery of the deep Earth biomass has gotten scientists considering the idea that maybe Mars and Venus might have their own microbial life networks beneath their surfaces. While Perseverance won't be drilling into the depths of the Martian crust to look for life, it will be collecting about 30 vials of rocky material, which it will lay out for a future mission to collect and take back to Earth. If evidence of past microbial life is discovered in any of these samples once they're returned to Earth, a feat which in and of itself will make history, then it will make the case for subterranean life all the more plausible. It's been shown in various scientific studies that Mars has abundant stores of water, but most of that water is locked up in its soil or is hidden deep within the red planet. And if insight and perseverance can in the future determine how active Mars is geologically, it could mean that the core isn't dead. And if that's the case, then we'll have to get digging. Although here's a bit of speculation for you all. Thank you, computer. We've long known that Mars's magnetic field has collapsed, and we've measured scattered magnetic activity across the planet's surface. But remember our video on the collapse of Earth's magnetic field during a pole reversal 40 some on thousand years ago? We mentioned in that video that a pole reversal event can last as long as 22,000 years, which is far longer than we've been observing the red planet. What if Mars has just been in an extremely long slumber due to a similar reversal event? There's no real evidence for this, but Hey, that's why it's speculation. And speculation can make for the basis of some epic science fiction. By the way, watch that video. Link in the description. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment what your reaction would be if one day you saw that we discovered microbial life on Mars. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss a video, and check out the Patreon, where you can get early episodes of the show, short science fiction, horror, and dark fantasy stories, your name in the credits, and more. I'm Eric Malachite. I'll see you next time.